Welcome to King Says So, a channel that advocates for one Africa, one land, one Africa, one language, one Africa, one currency, one Africa, one army. I wish to witness Africans all around the world united as one in our lifetime. Enjoy. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? It's your boy King King zero five three, Mister Easy Imale Neng Neng, and we back at it again with another one. I firstly want to thank everyone that has subscribed to the channel. We're trying to reach ten thousand subscribers uh, by the end of the year, and I believe that we can do it. The numbers are growing steadily, slowly but steadily. So I thank everyone for clicking the subscribe button. It's absolutely free. You pay nothing, and clicking the like button so that the video can be shared by the algorithm of uh, YouTube so that people who like things like politics, African unity, African poetry, African love, and African oneness, and um, all of those type of things of pan-Africanism uh, pan spirit um, can see the video. Please do click the uh, like button. It's very important to share the video also. And always leave your thoughts on the comment section. In this video, I'm speaking about, I just want to cover a little bit the the interview of Julius Malema at Metro FM. And um, the lady who interviewed uh, him, I just the, the name just slipping, but she did a good job. The type of questions that she was asking were on point. It's exactly what I would have also asked uh, Mr. Malema. Let's first listen to the first clip. Of what Malema said, and the first clip uh, results uh, uh, speaks more with what this channel is about, and it is about decolonizing the mind of the African child. Let's listen what Julius Malema said. Radio, uh, 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 when you leave your house, you 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 your mind gets to be channeled to a particular direction. So to a point where we seek white approval. So in the absence of white approval, we think that which we are doing is not correct. So we ought to liberate the brain uh, of an African child so that they know that they can coexist and be at an equal level with their white counterpart and that the system is not meant to serve white people. I mean, we're so colonized to a point that we, we, we've accepted it and internalized it. I don't understand why would people go and stay in Alexander? come and work in Santin, see all these beautiful things and still go back to Alexander and do nothing about it. That they don't stand up and say, no, but this can't be. They, they are psychologically uh, colonized to accept nonsensical arrangement they found and inherited from those who came uh, before us. So that's why we've got this problem. That it shouldn't be Julius. It shouldn't be President Mandela. It must be the people themselves. Who say, but why do we go work there as domestic workers, as security guards, as shopkeepers, and then accept to come back to this type of conditions that we're subjected to? So we now have to re-educate them. They must learn to and learn to accept unacceptable things. That we can live the same life they live uh, in town uh, because the power is in our hands. Where we just stand up and say, this is no longer acceptable. But that means that the leadership of this country stands for or is the caretaker of white privilege. They are administrators. They are completely, they don't know what they are doing. They, they, they didn't come in with an intention to do anything. I mean, we gave a lot during the negotiations. If you look at the negotiations, the only thing we came back with was the date of voting on the 27th of April 1994. Because you didn't come back with the land. You didn't come back with the ownership of the economy. You didn't come back with the ownership of defense. The ANC, with its eyes and mind open in 1994. Hold that thought for me. Let me go. What I find funny is that Africans are forever seeking the approval of the white people or the colonizers so to say whether it be it in the BRICS summit be it in the eu be it in the we are always seeking the approval of america uh, the uk china russia uh, whatever 
We are always seeking that. We always think that whatever that we are doing, it's not good enough until it gets the approval of those countries. If you agree, type agree on the comment section. They just type, I agree with you, King, on the comment section. Every time we are running to the Russia-African summit, we are running to the BRICS. Everyone wants to join the BRICS. Why? Because India, Brazil, and um, China is part of the, the BRICS. They, we are always running for approval. What is it that we want from these people? We need to learn how to liberate the black mind from all of these things. It it is not an easy task. It is not an easy ask. It's been years that these people have been colonizing us. And it's going to take more years to decolonize and liberate truly the mind of the African child from um, the colonizers, you know. And one thing that I liked what Malema says, and it's a phrase that I'm going to steal from now on going forward. He says, we'll need to learn how to unlearn to accept the unacceptable. We are, we are truly accepting the unacceptable. The first thing that we, we, are le we, we have learned to, 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 we have learned to accept is Africans having um, European names, Africans having white names, Africans speaking European languages. We have learned to accept the unacceptable. In the beginning, we were speaking our own language. That's why when I cry and say Africans can speak one African language, my African brothers are the ones who are fighting me. Go and watch the other video I, I, I posted about uh, Africa speaking one language. Just a brief, short video. My African brothers are the ones who are fighting me, meaning they have now accepted the unacceptable. You understand? Before 1994, our African brothers and sisters were beaten up and uh, discriminated against for having an African name in South Africa. You needed to change your surname and your African name so that you can have a, what they call a Christian name so that you can be accepted, accepted in other parts of the country and accepted in other um, jobs. Uh, because the white people were all the, all the people were owning all the, 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 the employment market. So they did not want to pronounce the difficult African names. So our African brothers and sisters, our grandparents were forced to, to have one, at least one, what we call a white name or a Christian name. But today, nobody's forcing us. You still find people giving their children those type of names. And you ask yourself, why? Don't want to talk too much. The leaders of this country are protecting white privilege. I mean, where do you, where have you seen in an African country? In South Africa, we still have things like in an African country like South Africa, when that has all the freedom on, on the world, the best freedom charter ever, uh, best constitution, everything, where an African child with African hair can be chased out of school, with dreadlocks, can be chased out of school in a white school because of a hairstyle. You don't see the African leaders saying anything. You see a noise. EFF is always making a noise, coming there, making a noise. But you don't see that school getting closed. You don't see anyone getting arrested. This has ha happened multiple times. I even want to say it's happening every year in South Africa where a child is discriminated against with uh, because of the texture of their hair. In South Africa, it happened this year, 2023. It happened. Last year it happened. It happens every year in South Africa. Some cases are not as big because they are not caught on camera. But on camera, there is many cases that have been caught in South Africa where children are discriminated in South Africa because of their hair, the texture of their hair. So let's listen again to Julius Malema, what he said on the second clip, which I feel, I feel like uh, is very... Um, you know, I love Julius Malema and how he articulates himself. Let's quickly listen to, let's continue. This is the last clip. I don't want to make this video long. I'll do part one, part two, part three of, of this interview because those are like a 40, uh, 40 to 50 minute clip. 
Um, let's listen to what Mr. Malema said. And with the commander in chief of the Economic Freedom Fighters, Julius Malema joins us in the studio. If you would like to engage with him, simply give us a call, drop us a voice note. This is a conversation that is curated for you. 2024 is around the corner. Know your leaders. Know your leaders so that you know exactly who you're going to put in power for the next five years in this country. I'm going to let you finish your trail of thought because you're speaking about what we left at Codesa on the negotiating yes. table. And in fact, it's actually within the, the, the cardinal pillars of the EFF about economic justice. Yes. So you're basically alluding to economic justice being left on the negotiating table. Did they have a lot of room to negotiate or was it just about who was negotiating at that time? Well, I think they were in a hurry to become something leadership uh, because they only came with the date of elections and that was it. But when we went there, we had all types of demands. Why would you say uh, liberation took place in 1994, 27 April, but the oppressor did not lose anything and the oppressed did not gain anything? There's nothing to show from 1994 to where we are now, except that We've got some constitution which guarantees us some freedom of speech and then we speak the way we like and we think that's what we've been fighting for. That has never been at the center of the foundation of the revolution. At the center of the foundation of the revolution was the land question. So the leadership went in there, negotiated, and Sir Ramaphosa made this point one day in one of the NECs of the Youth League. He says to us, comrades, when we were negotiating there, Already people were being offered shares in companies. A lot of them were beginning to receive shares of Vodacom. They were, Vodacom was now coming into South Africa. Uh, cell phones were going to be introduced. As people were negotiating freedom, people mm. were negotiating the deals on the sideline of the negotiations. Which people? The leadership of the ANC. All of them? All of them. All of them. I mean, do you know that when the ANC came back into the country, uh, and this is found in the uh, 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 biography of uh, uh, Trevor Manuel. When they arrived, first National Executive Committee of the ANC took place at a, a Felcherlechen farm, which is owned by Johan Rupert. They landed. Trevor said, Felcherlechen, let's go. They got into the cars, went into the farm. They actually realized later that they were driven into a meeting First National Executive Committee of the ANC into a farm of Johann Rupert. So when you talk capture, when you talk people who are negotiating, those are the people who are holding meetings at the farm of our oppressors. Yeah, so, you know, it's, it's amazing how we left so much at the Codesa uh, negotiation. Codesa negotiation, for those who don't know, is when the African leaders in the transition of power uh, in 1993, when they, was, they sat down, was it 93 or 91, 92, where they sat down and, and they were negotiating. The, the African government or the African the ANC and some other small parties were negotiating to say, what is it that we want as Africans from the, the apartheid government? And we truly came out with nothing there but administrative powers meaning we took over the government but we did not take anything in terms of the land the economy uh, 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 the powers i spent more than 27 years in mk i spent the best part of my life in an arms struggle against this regime i was angry and bitter that this decision was taken without comprehensive consultation that was my immediate gut feeling I didn't sleep when uh, our delegation was locked with the clerk negotiating. I was waiting for the outcome. When there was that press conference early in the morning announcing the suspension of military activities, felt like crying. The oppressor lost nothing, he had nothing to lose. And the oppressed had nothing to gain. When we came back from those negotiations, and when you sit down and you, you sit and you think about it, 29 years of the ANC of power, what is it that the, oppre the oppressor has lost? The oppressor still has their language in their schools. You know, uh, white people um, uh, uh, amounting to uh, less than 7% of South Africa's population. But 
we still learning Africans in our schools. Our children are still learning Africans. Why? Nobody knows. Why people still controlling the economy, the minerals of this country? They are seven percent of the population in South Africa is white people, but they still controlling majority. I they say eighty percent, some say ninety percent. I say they control everything. Because even the black people who own those minerals are controlled by uh, the whites. So for me, it's like they, 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 the only thing that we really got that I can say we can be thankful for is the freedom of speech. Because we like talking rubbish as South Africans. And um, it is the responsibility of channels like myself to say, at least because of this freedom of speech, let me try to to educate and try to decolonize the minds of my African brothers and sisters. That is the only thing that this channel is here for. Show love to African brothers and sisters, show patience, uh, show support, make sure that we show unity. Everything that has to do with African unity, African oneness is what this channel is about. Understand? Some people don't want that because the colonizers has taught us to discriminate. When you come from Zimbabwe, the way you look, the texture of your skin, I must discriminate against you as an African brother and sister. That is what they have taught us. When you come from Kenya, a little bit darker with your skin, I have to discriminate. You come from Ghana, you come from Nigeria, because of how you build, how you look, how you talk, I must laugh at you because you don't speak fluent English. I must laugh at you, I must discriminate you because you don't know how to speak English. That is how we were taught as African brothers and sisters. So it also comes back to the land issue. The land, we never got land in, our, in, in South Africa. We are squeezed and squashed into small sp uh, places outside the towns. You know, only the few elites uh, got to go into town and stay in the nice suburbs. But the rest of us are, sit are sitting in the, in, in, in the uh, townships where crime and all drugs and all unemployment, every problem you can find of South Africa, you find it in the townships. The Cape Flaps, people are playing with guns like they are water guns, shooting at each other every day. You think the police can't solve that problem? They can, but they just don't want to. And one thing that hurts me is Julius Malema saying, according to the autobiography of Trevor Emanuel, that the first executive committee meeting of the ANC was in Johannes Rupert's farm. That's crazy. Ladies and gentlemen, that is crazy. Johann Rupert is running this country. You know him. I've played, I've showed you guys Johann Rupert. You know Johann Rupert, okay? You know this guy. And all the companies that he owns, it's almost half of the companies in South Africa. Everything he owns, that guy. He owns everything in South Africa. If he wanted to poison our food and kill us, all of us, he can do it in, in one week. He can do it in one week. And um, it is a shame that many of our African brothers can be bought. Can be bought. So when you come to a poor person, an African poor leader, and you tell them, we're going to give you shares at Vodacom. Um, that time Vodacom shares were very low and the, the, the potential of them growing, you know, Vodacom did not have um, uh, a competition back then, you know, I think the only competition was MTN and then they both grew in, 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 in the majority of African countries, you can imagine, some of them are still having those shares even today, the African leaders that we have, it's, it's a shame. It's a shame, ladies and gentlemen, what is happening in our countries eh, as Africans. But what can we say? What can we say? Um, our people really are colonized, bought, and um, enslaved, minds enslaved, minds sleeping. And because of hunger, some of them took the deals on the side and uh, made the majority of the country to suffer because of the type of negotiation, lack of negotiation skills that they had for African brothers and sisters. That's why this channel will never rest until we liberate ourselves truly. Until Africa, until Africa liberates and wakes up, 
from the colonized mindset that is making us think that we are not good enough seeking always the european american approval for programs that we have in africa uh it might seem like a small little boy who talks things that he does not know but i will always think that the the reincarnation of guys like Tom, uh, thomas sankara he, they are ringing in my mind and the their death was not in vain i will always strive to be like those great african leaders to say my african brothers and sisters let us love each other let us unite and wake up these people are going to finish us south africa is uh, if i'm not mistaken the last african country to get its independence from its colonizers but we have done well in just 30 years 29 years we have done very well but africa as a unit has taken literally one step forward and 10 steps back and it's, we need african leaders like uh, uh, ibrahim tore tiaore we need leaders like the uh, mali um general who, of which when he took power in mali he demolished the french language and said we are no longer going to have french as the official language of mali we need leaders like that we need leaders like the general of of niger who is fighting day in and day out to liberate the the malian people from the 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 the, the clashes of the the the, the grip the 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 fifth and evilness of french in, in niger the Chad republic is also crying the same cry the same thing is happening in the drc the same thing is happening in sudan the same thing they want to now colonize uh, ethiopia the last country that was never colonized in africa we must wake up as africans um, but that's all i'm going to say thank you so much for joining guys tell me if you enjoy the, the this type of content on the comment section tell me what do you think about what julius malema said i'll be doing more of these videos of him speaking uh, because the interview is too long i don't want to now um, take uh, do long format 30 minutes 25 minutes format of videos no that's too long um so until we meet next time don't forget to pray and after you pray stand up and do your best so that god can do the rest i salute you thank you for tuning in if you enjoy the content leave your thoughts on the comment section and hit the like and subscribe button and we will meet on the next one